A lot of you have written in about making the tips for these quick picks after I described how to make the uh, quick picks in a video, I guess, uh, I guess two or three weeks ago. Anyway, the first version of the quick pick, of course, was this brass one. And I've been using it quite a lot on some of the pickings that I've been doing of dimple picks. And there's basically three ways that I've discovered how to make pick, uh, tips for these picks. The first and the easiest way is to take the tips from um, uh, a South Ord kit and simply grind it down on the bottom and then cut it off a little bit so it's not going to stick out too far from the handle. And that's the easiest way, but the problem with that I've discovered is that these South Ord picks oftentimes are too long and the shafts are square. And of course we want round shafts because it's much smoother and it gives us a lot of extra room in those tight keyways. So it takes a lot of extra work to try to round off those South Ord shafts and it weakens them. Well, you know, buying South Ord tips is going to run you about 25 bucks. So why do it? And the reason is because I've discovered that those aren't the best tips. They're too long, they're too weak after you get them all fixed up, and they don't give you great feedback. And ideally you want a shorter pick, and on many cases, because of the tight keyways, those South Ords are too big to get in there. So I started making my own tips, and here's just an example. It's a little bit shorter, and this is just one I whipped out this morning to show you as an example. And of course the tip can be shortened as small as you need it to get into the tightest of keyways. Now you probably notice this is a little bit different. I'll give you another tip that I've uh, just recently learned. Uh, here's a, a handle that I just finished. You notice I have the original brass ones which I just love and I, those are all double-ended. And then I discovered these when I was walking through Home Depot the other day. This is a handle for a cabinet and this is made from stainless steel and it's the perfect length and you see this is where I cut it out of. I just cut the end of it off and everything is perfectly prepared. No finishing required. All I need to do is round off the end, thread it and tap it and it's stainless steel so that'll last forever. A little bit harder to work with but just a super product. I also found some other ones. These are much larger as you can see. I don't know. Oh by the way those small ones are two dollars and thirty-five cents so saves you a lot of work for two thirty-five these larger ones, this is also stainless steel. I don't know why I bought this. I bought a chrome one as well. I'll find something to use them for, but those are a little bit more expensive if you like larger handles. Those run about $4.50. Anyway, back to our tips. These small tips, I made these from um, uh, windshield wiper inserts, stainless steel, and they work out very, very nicely, but again, we're faced with some of the same problems. There's a lot of filing involved. We have to round it off a lot of sanding and preparation in order to get it just right. Well, I've also discovered that you can make it out of music wire. And music wire is the perfect material. It's nice and hard. Uh, it's already, the shaft is already rounded to the smallest possible diameter. It's very, very strong. And all we need to do is figure out how to cut these tips. So I'm going to show you three different ways, or actually two different ways. I've already discussed the South Ord. I'm going to show you how to make the windshield wiper tips. And then I'm also going to show you how to make yourself some uh, music wire tips. Okay, so let's begin with the windshield wiper and we'll move over to the working area. Alright, the first thing I've done is I've taken a standard windshield wiper. It's 0.13 inches and that's about 3.35 uh, millimeters in, in width. So it's the medium one, the one you make your medium tension wrench. And one windshield wiper will give you about 10 tools. I cut them each to 45 millimeters, which is about one point, uh, let's call it just under two inches long, because that's all we need to work with. And the first thing we want to do is put it into our vise, and we want to just rough in the tip. So we're going to try to make ourselves a flag, and let me see if we can zoom just a bit here. Hope that's clear. All right, so I'm going to take my Dremel tool and I'm just going to cut myself, rough cut the flag. I don't want to get too close because the heat will change the metal properties just a bit. So let's just cut, our, cut the end of the flag, make a notch. Okay, we've got our, this now tip will become our, the end of our flag, or our flag or the end of the tip. And the rest of that material, we're going to take either a, a, a Dremel 
or we can use a file and simply remove the material. I left a little gap away from the flag to give myself some room to work. I want to keep that angle on the flag as square, as close to 90 millimeter or 90 uh, degrees as we can get. Oops. Now you can either use a file or if you want to continue using your Dremel, that's fine too. Just try to work in close because if you're trying to file out here with the Dremel, with the cutoff tool, it'll begin to vibrate on you. So remove all of this metal and then we'll be right back. Okay, we've got all that extra metal removed. Oh, that's still pretty hot. And get just to focus for us. So there's what we're looking at. Our flag is still rough shaped. Don't worry about that. Right now we're kind of focusing on that shaft. Now the shaft on this, of course, is still square. Now we're going to be working in a very tight keyway. And so putting a square shaft basically into a round hole, you're going to get a lot of clunking and fault seed feedback. So ideally, the shafts on our picks will be as close to round as we can get them. You might remember from the finishing class, we're going to take some a small strip of, this one happens to be 400 grit sandpaper, and we're going to use it like this to basically round off the top of the shaft here. I'll be right back with the next step. Okay, the top of our shaft, if I can get this out of the vise, is now really round. Well, someday they're going to invent the perfect camera that will focus on any zoom. Anyway, the top of it is really round. Now, don't worry about the flag. Right now, I'm just worried about the shaft. So, if, we, if the top of it is round, naturally, we're going to want the back of it round as well. So, but get yourself again another piece of uh, sandpaper and go to work on the back of it. We'll be right back with the next step. Okay, right now our shaft is looking pretty good. It's not very round on both sides, so it ought to slide in and out and be able to rotate easily inside of those tight keyways. Now let's go to work on our flag. Now I'm going to be using this in ABUS locks, so I'm going to want it very short and very thin. But again, you need to modify the tip shape and size according to the type of locks you're going to be picking. And the way we're going to do that is I'm simply going to hold the tip and I'm going to mount it inside of the vise. So just, you can just barely see it sticking up. And now I'm going to take my file and begin removing metal from the top of it. So until I get it just as thin as I want it. Okay, when I get there, we'll go to the next step. Okay, I got this to the thickness that we want it for ABUS locks. Now, I don't think my camera is going to be good enough to show this, but right now all of the edges of this are very, very sharp. Now we don't want to put sharp things, of course, into our keyway because that's how our picks get stuck and then they get jammed up. So we want to create an aerodynamic profile. In other words, we want to round off the front and the back side of the tip. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use <coughs> needle files. So I'm simply going to take from the inside, hold, the, hold it like that, and just do a couple of light brushes on there just to take that sharp edge off so that when I try to pull my pick back outside, uh, back out of the lock, this won't hang up on those pins. I'm going to do the same thing to the front and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, again, this might be a little bit hard to see, but I finished filing the, the top and the back part. So now it almost looks from this angle, the blade, the flag portion almost looks like an airplane wing. So it'll slide in and out and it'll push those pins out of our way as we move in and out of the keyway. So this is kind of rough. Now we're going to try to finish it up with some fine sandpaper. Okay, I'm using 1000 grit sandpaper. And just trying to polish up that edge just to make it again very smooth so when it goes in there. Now the heel, this part which is sharp, I'll probably try to take the edge off of that as well. No sense in creating any sharp edges in there to get caught up on anything. And now here's what we're looking at. Pretty good finish. 
Now we'll see if we can put this into our, our pick head. This is one of the new ones. Now we simply slide that dude in there, tighten down the Allen screw, and we're going to get on to the next step. Okay, you guys have all seen uh, Kokomo Locks trick before. You saw this from the fine finishing. We've got our pick tip in the quick pick, ready to go. We just want to take the final rough edges off if there are any. I'm going to put it in there with thousand grit. And I'm just going to move it back and forth until we get a good finish. And this really only takes about 10 seconds. This is such a time saver. I can't believe it. And there we go. Now we have a pretty well finished quick pick tip. And that took all of about 10 minutes. I might want to shorten this a little bit. I'm going to have to look at the lock. Um, and then, But I'm re it's ready to go. Now I can start to pick that Abus that's been driving me crazy. Let's take a look at wire tips. A material I'm finding incredibly useful around the shop is uh, music wire of all different diameters. This one, hap I don't remember the number or uh, letter code for this, but this is a music wire that's 50 thousandths in thickness. So when we get started, you need to just cut yourself a piece about two and a half inches long. We can, we're going to shorten it later, but that'll give you something to hold on to when we start modifying it. The first thing we need to do is uh, bend the end of it, put a good bend in it, so, and that will become our flag. So there's, there, let me show you the best way uh, to do that. Okay, all you need to do is put it in your vise. Uh, just leave it a little bit sticking out, and then take any tool. I'm going to use these pliers, and I'm just going to bend it over. We want as, as sharp and as clean of a bend as we can get at that 90 degrees. Any, if we got a, something less than that, if we got a sloppy bend, the shaft won't turn in the, in the uh, keyway. So try to get it as sharp as you can. And there we go. If it's not perfect at this point, just take your pliers and just kind of make it as close to 90 as you can get it. Now our flag obviously is way too long. We're going to have to shorten that up. And I'm just going to use my cutters for that. So I've cut it to a more reasonable length and we're going to grind it from there. But before we do that, we need to turn this into a true flag. It's round at this point. It's not going to do us a lot of good. So let's figure out a way to flatten it out. Okay, what I've done, I've, I have cut the flag down to a more reasonable length for me. You can cut it to whatever length you want. I've laid it on top of this tool steel simply because I wanted to hold it up and show it to you. But you can do it on your vise as well. I've also taped it down with a piece of duct tape, and that's because I'm going to be hitting it with a hammer in a minute, and I don't want it flying up and hitting me in the eye. Okay, what we need to do, tool steel is really hard stuff, and if we were simply to take a punch and put it on there and hit it, it probably would damage our, the tip of our punch. It's, that's how hard it is. So what we need to do, we're going to have to heat it up. And to do that, I'm going to use this torch. And we just need to heat up the tip of it until it's cherry red. As it is there, place your punch on it and hit it with a hammer solidly. And if you don't quite get it right, heat it up again and give it another shot. Don't over hit it though, you can crush it too flat. That's possible. I've done that several times. And so when you're done, we can get the camera to focus. Should look something like that. Now we're going to do a little bit of filing and grinding. Okay, I got that thing shaped just almost exactly the way I wanted to attack an Abus lock, which is my current target. So now what we want to do, I'd like to polish it, but to hold it like this and try to polish it, I'm going to end up with a hole in my thumb. So ideally, we're going to go ahead and mount it in our quick pick handle. But if I take this small diameter wire and stick it in there, that's not going to be very efficient. So what we're going to do, I'm simply going to bend the wire up around over itself and fold it and clamp it flat with my pliers. So let's do that real quick. Okay, the bottom of it should look something like that. And all I'm going to do now is take it and put it into the quick pick handle and take my own wrench and tighten it down.
and there we go nice and firm we're gonna get some good feedback make sure you got a really good solid lock up because if it's loose it's not gonna give you the feedback you need okay I'm gonna go finish it real quick and I'll be right back okay and there we go nicely finished no burrs now let's go pick some Abus locks. That's how easy this is, fellas, to make tips for your quick pick. Anyway, thanks for your time. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay legal.